Hi everybody, my name is Yunao and I'm a 3D artist at Chaos. In this video, I'm going to cover different ways how we can set up SSCG inside of Cinema 4D using V-Ray as our renderer. I will cover a couple of different ways how we can set up ACES, depending on the version of Cinema 4D you are using in your own production. We will also take a look how we can approach converting an older project or an ongoing one from the standard sRGB to the ACES workflow. Take a moment to download our project files linked in the video description below so you can play around with the scene in your own time. Now let's get started with a brief explanation what ACES is and what the benefits of using this workflow are. ACES stands for Academy Color Encoding System and for the sake of not getting too technical and having to do a huge deep dive into it, let's summarize it as this. A quite larger color space than sRGB delivering us richer colors and wider exposure levels, especially in the highlights of our images. Obviously, this is a loose definition and gross underestimation of the system, but in layman's terms, we are able to produce more vibrant images with much more saturated colors and have a better filmic response curve, resulting in richer shadows and much nicer roll-off of our highlights. Think of ACES as a capsule within which we are going to work. We have the entry point called input device transform and the delivery point or the so-called output device transform. We are going to make all of our light, texture and color work between those two points and the ACES workflow will make sure that our final image will be seen as intended, no matter what device it's being seen on. With that theoretical prep work out of the way, let's now see how that translates to Cinema 4D and V-Ray. There are a couple of ways to get working in ACCG in Cinema 4D using V-Ray. You could either use V-Ray's color management and leave Cinema 4D at its default settings, or alternatively, you could set up your project to use ACCG from Cinema 4D's color management in the project settings. Both methods have their pros and cons, and we are going to cover all of them. Let's first explore the V-Ray color management approach to render in ACCG. If you use an older version of Cinema 4D, anything before version 2023, you need to rely on the color management located in the render settings. Under the color management rollout, we can choose to use ACCG. We need to set up only one more thing. Open up your V-Ray frame buffer, and select the display correction layer. Instead of the default sRGB, choose the OCIO option. Now we need to locate the config file. Simply point to the path you have saved the configuration file and make sure to select the input color space to be ACCG and set the output color space to ACES SDR video. That's it. Now we are ready to use ACES workflow for our project. Now I can increase the intensity of a light significantly, giving the scene more light to work with and still enjoy beautiful highlights from it without any burnouts in the image. I can also have more saturated color as a light source and retain the color much better than if we were using the sRGB workflow. That helps with creating much more vibrant final frames. Alternatively, we can rely on the new color management of Cinema 4D. In order for us to be able to utilize that, make sure to have a 2023 version or higher. Now, let's see how we can set that up. Go to your project settings, either by selecting that mode from the Attribute Manager or by pressing Ctrl or Command D on your keyboard. Under the color management rollout, instead of using the default basic, choose the Open Color IO option. Once you do that, the selected ACES preset will set everything up here for you. Pay attention to the render settings. Now the color management options there will be grayed out, indicating that v uses the ones coming from Cinema 4D's project settings. Now we need to set up the very frame buffer and the steps are identical. Let's this time point to the OCIO config file coming with the installation of Cinema 4D. If you have a standard installation path as I do, it is located on the C drive in the OCIO folder 
at the following path. Once the config file is loaded, we can make sure that the input color space is set to ACCG and that we are viewing the image with the proper view transform. Until now, we have gone through the initial setup of the ACS workflow for two different use cases, depending on the Cinema 4D version you are using. Let's now explore how we can convert an older or existing project using the sRGB color space to the ACS workflow. A very important note to make here is that this whole process is irreversible, which means any changes we are going to make are destructive and we need to make sure we save an alternative version of the project. An easy way to go about this is to use Cinema 4D Save Incremental feature or simply save a new file with a different name by adding a descriptive suffix like underscore ACCG. This project was made in sRGB color space and let's once more navigate to the project settings and see how we can convert it to use ACES. Once we switch to Open Color IO, we have a Convert to OCIO button available for us to use. When pressed, we are presented with a small pop-up window asking us to select our input and render color spaces. For the first one, make sure the sRGB is selected from the drop-down menu and for the second input color space, choose Scene Linear Rec 709-SRGB. For the render color space, once again, choose Scene Linear Rec 709-SRGB. Remember to save the project as a new version of the original one, since once we press OK, we cannot revert back to the previous state of the project. Now we should get a message saying, Scene successfully converted to OCIO and the conversion is done. The color management in the render settings are once more grayed out, since we are now using the color management from the Cinema 4D's project settings. Let's now switch gears and focus on how the color space is handled on bitmap level. If we have a classic V-Ray material using Cinema 4D's old layering system, we can go into the specific bitmap and select the appropriate color space from the drop-down menu with the same name. In this project, I mainly have V-Ray node materials and they use the V-Ray bitmap node for importing any textures used in our materials. In that case, we need to pay attention to the transfer function and the RGB primaries drop-down menus. The transfer function handles the gamma value of our texture. It is important to know how our texture was created and or exported. Linear means the texture is already in the physical linear color space and no color corrections are needed. Gamma corrected allows us to specify a custom gamma value for that specific texture while sRGB tells V-Ray that a linear color space conversion is needed so the final rendered output matches the expected end result. The default auto option is the most versatile one and looks into the bitmap's name for strings such as underscore sRGB or underscore lin underscore sRGB. If there's a underscore sRGB in the file name, a sRGB transfer function will be applied. In case there is also a underscore lin or underscore raw string present, no color correction is applied. Let's move on to the RGB primaries. The default sRGB option makes sure that the loaded texture is considered as made in the sRGB color space. The same applies if we choose ACCG, that will consider the texture as one made in the ACCG color space. Raw, on the other hand, applies no transformation on the primaries and it is suitable for the so-called data-containing textures, such as normal maps, roughness maps, or glossiness maps. Once again, it is important to know how the texture was prepared and exported from the texturing software. A quite important note to make at this stage is that the automatic scene conversion only sets up the proper ACES color space for the native Cinema 4D bitmaps in the classic V-Ray materials. For the V-Ray bitmaps used in both classic and node materials, this needs to be adjusted manually by setting the right color space or transfer function. However, that can be automated if the underscore ACCG string is available in the texture file name. 
we can append that on a bunch of textures simultaneously using either the make tx tool or the open image io tool utilities and have them afterwards being automatically loaded in the proper color space. To round it up, let's take one of our rendered images and see how we can work with it in post-production. Let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and import it using the loader node. And out of the box, we get a different look than the one we were seeing in the V-Ray frame buffer. Remember the ODT or the Output Display Transform we were talking about in the beginning of this video? We had them set up in the VFB and now we need to do so here as well. Simply add an OFCIO color space node. And choose the source space we rendered in, so ACCG. And the output space should match the one we had in the VFB as well. So ACES 1.0 SDR video. This way we can have all the flexibility of ACES CG and work on our image in its wider color gamut. Just make sure any changes we want to make are happening before the OCIO color space node. As a bonus tip, let me show you how we can bake the ACES color transform straight in the output image from the V-Ray frame buffer. Just remember that in doing so, you will lose the flexibility of faces in post-production. So maybe only do this when you don't plan to have any additional changes to your image once you have finished rendering it. It is quite easy. Simply check Save in Image and the ACCG look and feel will be baked into your image. In this video, we have gone through a couple of different ways of setting up bases for our project as well as how we can convert older projects to be able to take advantage of the wider color gamut of ACCG. I hope you found this tutorial useful and if you have any questions or suggestions for future topics you would like to see us cover, don't hesitate to let us know in the comments below. See you soon!